Welcome back to the arena. I'm Michael Corrin, and thank goodness I'm healthy. But if I wasn't, would I turn to the World Health Organization? It has prestige, it has influence, but a new report concludes that much of what the WHO says is without sufficient foundation and possibly downright misleading. Could throw the word dishonest in there. How, why, and what does it say about such international bodies? Now, Paige McPherson has been doing some research, and I wonder what she's... This is important because World Health Organization, generally, it, it's, it's like the Pope saying something. Um, it's real. It, it is a disease. It, it, it is a health issue. They weren't considered to be political. Mm -hmm. But apparently, they are. I completely agree with you. Their word is like gospel mm. to a lot of people. They're definitely considered the eminent uh, organization when it comes to, uh, especially in times when, we're, let's say, we're considering Ebola. Yeah. You know, they would be the authority on something like that. And so it's very important for those reasons. And then, of course, it's very important because uh, they are mostly funded by government money, a, a lot of that being our government mm. money. So certainly, uh, it's troubling to see that there's this new study out of McMaster University in Ontario saying that uh, the recommendations that the WHO is giving uh, is actually, they're often based on flimsy research, there's not enough evidence, and even by the WHO's own standards of evidence, uh, which I'm sure, you know, the average person when they hear a WHO statement doesn't look into, but even by those standards, mm. They're really, they're not strongly supported by evidence. I can't help thinking of Roger Daltrey every time you say what the WHO said about something, because <laughs> Roger Daltrey's word is, is gospel. But Master University is a very fine university, mm -hmm. which doesn't have a reputation of being right wing. Um, nope. and, and the medical school is one of the finest in, in North America. So this is a mainstream, highly respected university. Mm -hmm. I don't think they had any sort of agenda when they set out to research this. No. But we have, have to ask the question, why? Why is it about money? Is it about influence? Is it political? Why would the World Health Organization be doing this? Well, uh, I mean, I guess it'll be speculation, but the... I think that when you have an organization like this that is of such a high standing in a lot of people's minds mm. and that is such an authority, um, a source of that authority, they, they have the, it's in their own interest to maintain that. It's in their own interest yeah. to give yeah. recommendations, to act, to give definitive statements because people are looking to them for that information. But to put it into a, a little bit of context, in the, the WHO's own grading system, the World Health Organization, not the cool band, when their own grading system to determine how evidence supported their recommendations are, 289 uh, strong recommendations came out between 2007 and 2012, and they have 33 different levels of guidelines for this. So to break it down, 73 of those recommendations were actually based on weak evidence, which by the WHO's own guidelines could not be justified under any of the exceptions that the system allowed for. So they gave 73 recommendations out of, 200 and... out of 289. Okay. Um, in that period, 2007 to 2012, 73 of those were based on weak evidence that by the WHO's own guidelines, according to this McMaster study, could not be justified any, under any of their own exceptions. Yep. So that is troubling when you think of the fact, you know, think about what the WHO uh, talks about, what they give recommendations on. It is things like Ebola. It's those big world health crises and, and people uh, across the world, especially in third world countries, developing countries where they don't have established medical systems and strong mm. research supported medical systems like we do here here in Canada, they really look to the WHO for oh. this kind of evidence and this kind of advice. In parts of the developing world, in fact, they will ask the World Health Organization to come up with a conclusion for them. Because exactly. they simply don't have the infrastructure. And we don't argue with their findings because it, it, would, it, was, it would be blasphemous to do so. You, you right. assume that they are speaking the truth. Look, this is not the first time, and I'm not saying this is political. It may be, as, as you said, it's very pertinent. I think it may just be self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're, they're doing too much. They involve themselves in too much. They have to come up with, with, with responses, and sometimes they're not viable. But the United Nations and so many of, of, of its offspring, they're, they're deeply political. Mm -hmm. And they obsess about certain issues in certain countries, so this is nothing new. And we definitely see some overlaps in what the McMaster study found and the same problems that we find with the United Nations. The McMaster study found that a lot of the experts that are on the panels at the WHO that make these kinds of recommendations are very, very influenced, either by their own research biases and their own sort of partners and affiliates with which yeah. they do that, or from funding, potentially, from specific pharmaceutical companies, which mm -hmm. of course does comprise some of the WHO's funding as an organization in addition to that government money. So we see that kind of influence trying to sort of look out for their own interests. And those are some of the similar things that we see with the United Nations. Um, I have a few not so fun facts about the United Nations <laughs> to share. Just to look back, uh, um, I think one of some of the more egregious things that we found yeah. about the United Nations that are recent. So. Um, 
first of all, we can look at the United Nations Human Rights Council, and we can look at, to draw this sort of connection, the, the recommendations that the UN Human Rights Council might make could be influenced by some of its members. Saudi Arabia, China, Cuba, Qatar, Algeria, Russia, these are recent appointees to the UN Human Rights Council, of course, making decisions on human rights for the world, maybe influenced by their own, uh, you know, very religious or, or extremist views. Uh, then we've got the uh, treatment of Israel, so mm. by probably influenced by a lot of these same countries. 20 resolutions against Israel in the 2014-2015 season by the UN General Assembly, and only three against the entirety of the rest of the world. So we've got 20 against Israel, three against the entirety of the rest ah. of the world. Then, you know, there's just the, the sheer fact of Iran being elected to the UN Human Rights Commission, or Women Rights Commission, excuse me, in 2014. I'm sure it's very liberating to be a woman in Iran in 2014. And, of course, uh, you might remember back in, uh, in the summer when there was the conflict between Gaza and Israel, um, when they found uh, those rockets, the, the yeah. UN found the rockets uh, inside of that UN school that were being stored there, and the UN uh, workers there promptly handed them back over to the authorities in Gaza, which, of course, are Hamas, which are the terrorists. So... It, it, it's, <laughs> it is... You mentioned it, wrong. We'll end with this. It's an anecdote that was shared with me. Um, of all people, by John Clark, the Ontario Coalition Against Poverty. Mm -hmm. you know, hardly someone who's a friend of conservatives or I'm sure Sun mm -hmm. News but he told me this story it was um, an international uh, socialist conference in in Toronto and they had a stall there from the Iranian government because they were in the struggle against the imperialist powers and a woman went over and started to smash it and the comrades took it said what are you comrade don't do this sister don't do this Iran with this and she said I'm Iranian she said I'm a feminist I was arrested by the Iranian government. They kept me in a coffin, literally in a coffin, 23 hours a day. How dare you allow them to set up here? Yet they were elected to the UN Women's Rights Committee. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm.